Are you tired of arguments that go nowhere? Let's change that today. We're going to dive into the art of turning heated debates into constructive dialogues. And we're going to do this by breaking it down into four parts. First, we're going to explore the nature of arguments. In part two, we're going to unlock the secrets of emotional intelligence. In part three, we're going to reveal the power of choosing the right words to say. Stay tuned for part four, where we put the pieces together and uncover exactly what to say to instantly diffuse a heated argument. All in, this is about transforming conflict into collaboration. Hello everyone, I'm Matt Riley, and thanks for watching my YouTube channel, Learn Something New. Like many of you, on many occasions, I've been stuck in frustrating arguments, both in professional and personal environments. Professionally in sales and solar development, personally in relationships, not just with my wife, who I've been with for 19 great years, but also with my friends and family. From my experience in communication and conflict resolution, I've discovered effective ways to turn heated debates into constructive dialogues. These techniques and tools can be game changers for you as well. As my three-year-old daughter says, sharing is caring, so let's get to the good stuff. Part one, the nature of arguments. To understand this better, think of a good old game of ping pong. Now, just like in ping pong, where the ball goes back and forth, arguments often involve the same back and forth. The ball here represents the talking points each person is trying to make, and the players are the people in the argument. Now here's an important point. In a friendly game of ping pong, the goal is to keep the ball going in play and enjoy the synergy and flow of the game. Just like in a conversation, the goal is synergy and flow. If we view someone's opinion as simply different way of hitting the ball, not necessarily wrong, we're more likely to keep the discussion going in a positive collaborative manner. Now, if we start playing the game with the sole intent of winning, determined to prove that our way of hitting the ball is the right way, that's when the game turns to a competitive match. This is similar to an argument. The simple and possibly subconscious belief that the other person's differing view is wrong adds a combative edge to the game. Then it becomes it's not who can hit the ball harder or smarter, it's about how our emotions and ego get wrapped up in the game. When driven by our need to win the point, our communication often shifts from understanding each other to winning at all costs. And this is where miscommunication serves the ball. So what's the takeaway from the ping pong analogy? The understanding that arguments are more than just clashes of different opinions. They're like a game of ping pong, influenced by our emotions, our egos, and most importantly, our beliefs. Understanding these influences can help us approach discussions with a different mindset. Instead of a game to win, we can play a game towards mutual enjoyment, synergy, and understanding. This shift is essential in turning arguments into productive, respectful conversations. Remember, it's not about defeating the person across from you. It's about engaging in a rally where both players contribute and enjoy. That's the essence of turning a potential conflict into a productive dialogue. Part two, emotional intelligence. Understanding and leveraging emotional intelligence is key to diffusing an argument effectively. Let's break this big topic down to three essential components. First is self-awareness. This is where it all starts. Knowing your own emotions helps you respond rather than react in heated moments. Response and reaction are very different, but may feel similar. When you're aware of what triggers your frustration or anger in an argument, then you can manage your response better, preventing reaction that can escalate to negativity. Second is empathy for others. Empathy is about seeing the argument from the other person's perspective. Even if you don't fully agree with their point, why do they? Do you understand where they're coming from? Can you feel their feelings? Empathy is recognizing their emotions and understanding where they're coming from, even if you don't agree with it. This understanding can soften the tone of the argument, making the other person feel heard and respected, which is critical for finding common ground. Third and lastly is effective communication. Emotional intelligence guides us in how we express our feelings. It's about conveying your thoughts in a way that's clear, respectful, and non-confrontational. This involves actively listening to the other person and responding in a way that acknowledges both parties' feelings helping to de-escalate tension and create an environment for a more constructive dialogue. Now, emotional intelligence is a huge topic and really deserves a video on its own. There's a lot of great content out there already, so I won't be diving too deep into this specific topic on this video. In the description of this video, you'll find additional resources to deeper your understanding of emotional intelligence. My personal top two resources have been the books Emotional Intelligence by Daniel Goleman, this is the author that initially got the concept out there, and the book Emotional Intelligence 2.0 by Gene Greaves. 
Part three, choosing the right words. The words we choose are powerful and possibly one of the most powerful things that we have in life. Phrases like, I feel, versus you make me feel, can make a huge difference in the direction of the communication. By using I feel instead of you make me feel, there are major benefits from this. First is avoiding blame. Saying you feel can come off as an accusation and probably will put the other person on the defensive. On the other side, I feel statements focus on expressing your emotions without directly blaming the other person. This is super important in preventing escalation during an argument. Second is conflict resolution. Intense situation using I feel can help de-escalate arguments. It shifts the focus from blame and finger pointing to expressing personal feelings and beliefs. This makes a path for more productive and less confrontational dialogue. Third is encouraging open dialogue. I feel statements invite open and honest communication. They demonstrate the willingness to share your true feelings without attacking the other person creates an environment where both parties are more likely to engage in constructive conversation. Part four, putting the pieces together. Now let's see how these techniques can come together in a real life situation. Picture this scenario. Now it may be realistic for many of you. You're discussing household chores with your partner. The conversation begins to heat up and both of you are feeling underheard and frustrated. In this moment, instead of continuing the cycle of blame and finger pointing, Try a different approach. You might say something like, right now, I feel overwhelmed, and my instinct is that you feel frustrated as well. I think we're both simply trying to be heard, and we're not trying to attack each other. So what I want to do is find a solution that works for both of us, without either of us feeling overly burdened. I know you don't want to stress me out, just like I don't want to stress you out. Can we look at this together and figure out a good way to handle what we have to in a productive manner? By acknowledging your feelings with, I feel overwhelmed, without attributing to them as a reaction to the other person's actions, they're not assigning blame. Recognizing the other person's emotions. My instinct is you're frustrated, shows empathy. The statement, I know you don't want to stress me out, shows mutual understanding and respect. This kind of communication can shift mutual defensiveness into collaborative problem solving. Now in our hypothetical scenario, Rather than escalating into arguments of who's done what in the past, this approach changes the conversation's tone. It opens a pathway for both parties to express their views and work towards a solution together, transforming the mutual dissonance into mutual respect. Now remember, active listening is crucial to forward progress. It's not just about waiting for your turn to speak, but generally understanding the other person's perspective. Implementing these techniques consistently can transform not just one argument, but the way you communicate in all aspects of life. As we wrap up, let's quickly recap what we've covered today. We started with gaining more understanding of the nature of arguments and how belief shapes conversations, steering them towards conflict or dialogue. We then dove into emotional intelligence, discussing its critical role in recognizing our own emotions and empathizing with others. We saw how choosing the words wisely, especially using I feel instead of you make me feel, can significantly change the direction of our conversations, helping to avoid blame, resolve conflicts, and encourage open dialogue. Finally, we put all the pieces together with a strategy that transforms mutual dissonance into mutual respect, paving the way for effective, problem solving, and deeper connections. The journey isn't just about avoiding arguments. It's about enhancing the way we communicate in all aspects of our lives. I truly hope you got something valuable from this video. My assumption is, if you're watching it this far, you probably have. Please like and subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell to be notified when I post the next video. In the comments below, give me candid advice on what I can do to make these videos better, or let me know your thoughts on the topic and if these tools will work for you. Feel free to share your experiences with arguments, how you handle them, so we can also learn from you. Additionally, I invite you to suggest future topics that you're interested in if you'd like to see me make a video on it. Thank you for watching, and remember, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Get out there and be great. And if you can't be great, at least be careful, more specifically, be full of care. Thank you very much.